Hi guys, and welcome to Gardening with Dave. It's another lovely day, it's a little blustery, but you find me with the fruit trees again. And uh, earlier on in the season, we were talking about that they used to have climbers, like this clematis, one or two flowers left on it, or whether you should climb fruit trees up your fences. And uh, my view is that the fruit trees are the best idea because two bits of flower left on the clematis and no blossom left on the fruit tree but although that's just going to be green for the rest of the season we now have apples to look forward to and lots of them this tree alone has got about 50 on uh, this tree three and we've got seven pears in total down the end there one cherry as well but we won't talk about that He's not very happy at cherry tree. So now begins the the constant battle I have every year with aphids on my fruit trees. Now it's a battle that I'd say I'm winning because the trees look pretty happy and 50 apples on this one is very cool. But we're not obviously going to get any more fruit so now it's a question of how many we can keep keep alive. How many will we lose to the odd football or hula hoop? How many will we lose to a, uh, a big old gust of wind or just because that particular apple can't be bothered anymore. So the countdown begins. Three is the magic number for the show. You need to show three apples and uh, that's always been my target. Although this year with having 50 on this one tree, that's my best ever year for apples. So happy days. But the trouble is, the aphids, I'm going to zoom in on there, the aphids love to nibble at the ends, the fresh leaves. And see that ant there working away? The ants are on the aphid side and they, they're like, the aphids are their cattle essentially. And the ants protect the aphids because they secrete this sweet stuff that the ants like, I guess. Uh, on my team, the ladybirds because the ladybirds eat the aphids the ants are protecting the aphids from the ladybirds so there's a couple of things you can do you can just rub them off with your hands if they've affected infected in the end of a, a branch like this one this is uh, not going to be needed in the grand scheme of things our main branch going along it, that we keep and then every year we get the growth with the apples like this one here but this extra piece is not needed so I tend to just pick off the top of that with the aphids on and get rid of it. That does quite well for uh, keeping the population down. Another way is to blast them with uh, a hose on a, you know, a strong setting. Blast them all off, that works. Had to do that with the raspberries the other day because they had quite a, an aphid issue. And another way is uh, a squeezy bottle with some a little bit of washing up liquid in and you just spray them and they don't like that don't know why perhaps it makes it slippy and they fall off who knows but uh, I tend to do all three methods picking off spraying them a bit if it's really bad and uh, with the squirty bottle as well and then see how we get on if you see this tree it's only a couple of apples down the bottom there but here look there's the old growth last year stop there and this season has grown all the way along to the end. So that's that branch sorted. See, I've pinned it down with the, the little metal ties and both the apple trees are pretty much there. A little bit further to go on this branch, but uh, nearly there. Pears take a bit longer and they, they grow at a different time of the year. Sometimes they have a great spurt and go all the way along the branch. And other, other years they appear to do not a great deal. Seven pairs isn't a great haul. There's one there, look. A couple more up here. Pretty happy. We'll see how we get on. So yeah, that's the fruit trees. Uh, what else we got going on? Got a forest of pak choy here. I'll give you a better look. Look at them. And that's just all the... Uh, Last year's pak choy went to seed and uh, I did plant some seed that I'd saved. 
at the end there in a few neat rows and then all of a sudden this lot that are just fallen off the the old plants sprouted so it's great pick it young with the uh, pak choy because it loves to go to uh, seas which is what happened last year uh, so keep it well watered and pick it young obviously with this much it's great pick the biggest ones and let the smaller ones grow on looks like we'll be eating a fair bit of pak choy for the next few weeks happy days uh, lots more stuff out hardening off ready to go to the allotment the strawberries need to go down uh, got a spot ready for them that you'll see later and uh, here's our kale that we did a while back again it's looking pretty happy but the roots coming out the bottom it really wants to be uh, in the ground as well so I'm getting in him hardened off ready to go down uh, leeks again you really need to get them planted it's finding the time is the issue at the moment oh how's your uh, potato experiment getting on in the uh, bag for life here's mine pretty happy popping out the top it's nearly full might try and get a bit more in the top there but keep it watered and uh, hopefully we'll get a load of potatoes in there happy days what else a quick look in the greenhouse nice and warm in here quieter lovely here we go here's the padron row Look at them fellas, very happy. And uh, jalapenos again, they're happy. These are the two sweet varieties that we had. There's a couple I got from the chap at the allotment, the banana ones. They look great. Uh, more jalapenos, here's all the aubergines all coming on, a treat. Very happy. Uh, mystery pepper A there, what's this one? Oh, KN, planted some seeds of those and they're coming on. And uh, Olu, here's your, uh, you had the idea about a, an old fizzy drinks bottle. There's a pot and uh, we're giving it a go. We're giving it a go with Mystery Pepper A. So we'll see what Mystery Pepper A is and whether it likes being in the pot. I do wonder about the, uh, the uh, see-through nature of it and what effect that'll have on the roots, but uh, I guess we'll find out. Uh, what else? Oh, a friend of mine gave me a couple more courgette varieties. The uh, yellow flying saucer and another one. I forget the name of that now, but at the start of the season, I was a bit worried that with the lockdown and whatnot, not being able to get seeds, that I'd uh, be a bit short of the variety. And uh, that's uh, turned out not to be the case, what with swapping with various people and the seeds I managed to get online, albeit a bit late. I think I've got maybe seven or eight varieties of courgette this year, uh, three sorts of squash. And tomatoes, my biggest worry at the start of the season, I had two packets, two sorts of red cherry tomatoes, and uh, normally I'd like to grow quite a few varieties, so that was a bit, a bit of a worry. But as it's turned out, I did a rough calculation the other day, I think I've managed to get 13 tomato varieties which is a little bit mental to be fair but never mind it's all good fun here's the tomato section all labeled up we've got our sweet million down there cherry With the flower heads coming uh -oh, what's this one orange cherry he's the biggest so far and again with lots of uh, flower heads coming gardener's delight the red cherry and then Romana, happy again, and black cherry. Ah, the black. This is a great one. Managed to get this off a uh, chap at the allotment. It's like a, a purple, purple cherry tomato. Black one. I really wanted to try one. Saw a chap on the allotment growing them last year and wanted to get some. And amazingly, managed to find some. Happy days. And then, as I said last time, managed to squeeze in our mystery tomatoes C and D into the patch here as well and they got flower buds on both of those too so won't be long till we find out what C and D are. The tomatoes, still time for you to have a guess though and win this t-shirt, I'll have a padron and also guess the varieties of our two chilli peppers and our two uh, cucumber gherkin variety 
Not sure what they are. Now, I've planted these all on. I'm going to keep these in pots. Obviously, I grow all my peppers in pots, so that's cool. But um, I'm going to keep them in there. But I decided to keep these two cucumbers in uh, pots as well. I say cucumbers. Uh, because I planted out the row of actual cucumbers here. And they were looking a bit worse for wear, going a bit yellow. Remember I was saying about it's a bit roulette whether you overwatered them or uh, underwatered them. And uh, they were looking very shabby. So I took four out, put them back in pots. And I'm going to see if uh, I can make them a bit happier. Their roots were uh, looking a bit a bit uh, unhealthy, shall we say. So fingers crossed I'll be able to sort that out. But I'm going to keep them separate. I had all of my cucumber eggs in one basket. And the basket had an egg size hole in it, it would appear. So best to split them, see if these three improve and the other four improve and see which works best. But that'll be that. Um, what else have we got? Lots to show you down the allotment, actually. So maybe we'll hand over to Dave down there and have a check up on what's going on. Thanks very much, Mr. 50 Apples. We've only got two on the cooking apple tree, unfortunately, and one of them looks a bit ropey, never mind. Everything on the uh, red, white and black currants is doing very well, and the raspberries are all looking very happy. Fruit on all of them. This is the black raspberry, the yellow and the two reds down the end there, and our strawberries here are going to be going in down on this strip at the side. When I get it weeded, etc. But uh, let me quickly show you some of the other stuff that's going on down here. So, look at these rainbow chard popped up in the onion bed. Loads of it, tons in fact. I'm just going to be picking this now to eat, eat it when it's young because I've got so much growing over the other side. And look at this, should have taken my own advice. This was going to be for the leeks, you remember? But because uh, of that cold snap, didn't want to put the leaks out. And in the meantime, another ton of rainbow chard. A quite ridiculous amount, if I'm honest. But uh, all good. Maybe we can keep searching for the elusive yellow golden chard. Because of all the ones out here that are more established than the ones I moved over, only two of them were yellow. So we'll keep looking for that. Potatoes coming on well. The covered ones are very happy. Check it out, getting some flowers on. And even the ones we didn't cover are certainly looking a lot greener than brown. So that's brilliant news. But really, what I wanted to show you is the new tomato area. Now I put up this frame the other day, uh, just banged some wood into the ground and then screwed it here, tied it onto these metal poles that were already fixed in the ground and I'm going to grow all those excess tomatoes on this frame. I'm trying to keep it down as uh, I was saying in the greenhouse earlier, I've got uh, maybe 13 varieties of tomato which is quite a few. So we're going for two of each of those varieties in this frame. Uh, I've already got six types in. As you can see you planted out. Looking pretty happy. All labelled obviously. See what comes through. What's on that one? That's the orange cherry. So, and even look at that little flower. So, there's going to be a whole lot of tomatoes here soon. And in the corners, planted some cooker melons. And I'm just going to let these, I've not grown them outside before, but see how we get on. Nice warm summer. I'm going to grow these up and along the frame, they grow like a vine. So, that should be cool. And then, over here, I'll give you a wide angle shot, is the courgettes and squash area. And so, three types of squash and several different types of courgette. These all went in fairly recently, but they're already looking happier. Lots of buds forming. The leaves are coming through a lot greener. When they're in the pot for so long, they started to go a bit yellow, like this one, not because they really wanted to be out, but because we were waiting for that cold snap to, look, to go. 
I was holding them all in the greenhouse probably for a bit too long, but they're out now. They appear to be pretty happy. These ones that we uh, put in before the cold snap and protected with the cover look really happy. Check him out. I'm just looking for any signs of tiny fruits on them. None yet. All in good time. And then marrows and pumpkins over there. Uh, beans in here. These are the ones that got hit by the frost, obviously. And they're still a little bit green, so I'm not totally giving up on him. I have brought down some of the replacements and popped them in as well. Some runners over here. Two different sorts from two different people, which is cool. That's good. I think I'm going to give cucumbers a go outside as well, which I've never tried before, but because of the issues we were having uh, with the other ones in the greenhouse, I thought I might try outside. Spread the, uh, spread the eggs around as it were. So here is the brassica land and everything in there. If you can see that with the net in. Coming on very well, well protected, very happy. Need to get in and weed it obviously, but all in good time. And then our root crops. Here we go. We did this once already. These are carrots. Look at that. Lovely little line, little fern headed fellows. There's quite a lot and they're very happy keeping them well watered. Uh, the South Sophie again, weeded. A nice row. It's great when you weed, it's very satisfying. A bit irritating to do, obviously, but oh, it's not the end of the world. And uh, then you can stand back and look at your row and you can see exactly what the plants are you're growing. Just like these. Here's my parsnips. They're very happy too. All popped up along the row. Decent amount. Now our turnips and swedes are suffering. See, they look like they've been shot all these uh, tiny holes and that's a beetle. Apparently, that I've been reading about. It attacks the leaves, makes them look like that. So, I mean, they're still growing, although they don't look great. I'm debating whether to uh, plant some more up in the greenhouse and grow them on a bit before I put them out and maybe they will uh, avoid this, the beetle that's attacking them, who knows. Here's our rainbow chard that we rescued from over there by the leeks. Picked some a few weeks ago. That is coming on very well. Look at him. Very happy. A green one, red ones. Where's the yellow fella? I don't know, there's one around here somewhere. There he is. Look at him. Beautiful. As I say, only two of these were yellow. Make sure there's another one up the end there. And then this, this side are the ones I planted, or the ones I sowed from seed. New packet. Didn't have bothered that, given how many I've got popped up over there for free. Never mind. But hopefully I'm hoping to get some yellows from this. Oh, there's one. Brilliant. Two. Cool. Three. Oh, great. Four. A lot more. Five. Brilliant. Yellow really makes a, a bunch of rainbow chard look, a, look brilliant. It's great. Beetroot there. More colour beetroot. Another row. Weeded. And some uh, white spinach chard there as well that was the out of date packet and uh, just threw in to see what would happen and it's pretty happy as well so that's cool and over here the asparagus brilliant stuff so so far out of these three I had in this first bed one's come up and he looks cool a little ferny and then Four out of the five so far in this one. Again, looks pretty happy. Uh, how many here? One, two, three, four, five. Five out of five in this bed. And one, two, three, four, five, six in this one. This one was a bit uh, longer to get going, but it certainly seems to be pretty happy now. Quite a few lovely heads. Still, it's going to be a while before we get to eat those. Never mind. So that's it, probably. That's a, a good catch up of what's going on down here. Got a lot to do, water everything a couple of times a day at the moment with the heat, but uh, everything's going well, apart from the turnips. 
Never mind. Um, Splendid. That's about it for today's episode. Uh, leave any questions you might have in the comments below. Also, let me know what varieties you've got on the go. Be uh, great to hear. Maybe something for me to try next year. Uh, remember to subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, that way you get notifications when uh, we put up an episode. And also, probably a week left to enter the mystery seed competition. Brilliant. Next week, we'll be definitely putting those leaks in the ground. So, uh, that'll be about it. Take care. Bye.